And tributes have poured in from around the world for former Pope Benedict, who died Saturday at the age of 95. Pope Francis honoured his predecessor at an evening service in St. Peter's Basilica in Rome. Benedict's health had been in decline for several years and he had been largely absent from public view. Bells toll, announcing the death of former Pope Benedict. And many are paying their respects. He was a pope who will go down in history for an enormously significant fact, which was his resignation. That had not happened for 600 years, and it was a gesture of great freedom, great audacity and great courage. Religious leaders praise him for being the first to meet the victims of sexual abuse within the Catholic Church. Before he was elected pope, he was in charge of the doctrinal section of the Holy See which had responsibility for issues to do with the, the sexual abuse committed by priests. So he personally was responsible for the laicization of over 400 priests around the world. But sexual abuse scandal was a divisive issue. Benedict was repeatedly criticized for not doing enough. Some remember him as a religious leader whose views did not represent the modern world. He was surely a very strong thinker, but the positions he took on abortion and homosexuality were really of a different age, I think. His dogma, he wasn't living in the same world. But for many people in Germany, Pope Benedict was a source of pride. He was Germany's first pontiff in almost 500 years. In this small town, the house where Benedict was born has been opened. And a book of condolences is on display. I am of course concerned and saddened, but you have to say he already wrote in February after 10 years as Pope Emeritus that he is now ready in prayer, in devotion, that he is ready to go before his judge and that he is ready for the last earthly journey. Pope Benedict's body will be displayed in St. Peter's Basilica in Rome for three days followed by his funeral on Thursday. Let's go straight to our special correspondent, Aya Ibrahim, in Rome. Uh, Aya, how are people in the Vatican paying their respects? So yesterday, uh, right after the announcement was made, we saw crowds slowly but surely grow around here, around the area of uh, St. Peter's Square to pay their respects. And starting tomorrow, uh, Pope, uh, former Pope Benedict XVI's body will be lying in state at St. Peter's Basilica right behind me. And so we are expecting that uh, mourners will be pouring in uh, to, to give their condolences and pay their last respects. Uh, last night, uh, during the last mass um, here in, um, in, in the Vatican, uh, the current sitting pope uh, paid his respects to his predecessor, saying that... Uh, the church was lucky to have him. And while there is a sense of sadness, Monica, there's also a sense of acceptance and um, that this news was really expected. People have really been braced for it already. On Wednesday, the sitting pope had uh, asked uh, the faithful to pray for his predecessor, saying that he's, his health had been deteriorating. Right. And of course, uh, uh, the fact that Benedict XVI removed himself from the limelight uh, in the years after his papacy, in, in what way would you say has that affected his perception amongst Catholics? I mean, the, the official reason uh, why he was uh, he, he stepped down was you know for advanced uh, advanced age and uh, health, but there's there's there is an opinion that this that he stepped down because of the amount of scandals that had marred his reign, whether that's the child abuse scandal or there's also a banking scandal, and so it was seen it was seen that he was stepping back and kind of giving space uh, to a more uh, you know someone new, someone who could. Uh, uh, try to uh, at least uh, cast a new light on uh, the Catholic Church. And so while he was not isolated, there was a completely isolated and his successor did visit him on a somewhat regular basis. Um, you know, there, there, there was still um, a kind of sympathy to his more conservative um, opinions among the faithful.
Right. I mean, it, it was quite a unique situation, certainly for modern times, having two popes there at the same time. They even made a movie about that. For the past 10 years, there have been two popes in the Vatican. How did that dynamic work for the Catholic Church? I mean, it's really no secret that the current pope and his predecessor had very, very different opinions. The predecessor, uh, Pope Benedict, uh, the former pope, was more of an academic, uh, more somebody who spent a lot of time reading and writing and praying, while the current pope is uh, more, uh, you know, interested in uh, pastoral work um, uh, and had generally more liberal views. So, you know, the tension in their opinions and in the style in which they led the church is very, very different. At the same time, outwardly at least, their relationship was uh, 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 amicable. And uh, as I mentioned, the sitting pope made an effort to uh, regularly um, visit his predecessor um, and, and, and speak well of him in, uh, in public. Mm. Uh, and so, you know, there were some t tensions in thought, but at the same time, outwardly, they wanted to give a united front. All right. Thank you so much, Aya Ibrahim, uh, reporting for us uh, from the Vatican in Rome. Thank you, Aya.